All right, so today we're gonna make some cupcake stands, which are just little cute exercises where you can explore different ways of manipulating rims. Um, so I'm gonna demo a few different ways you can treat rims. And then when we go on um, to make a larger cake platter, you can see the possibilities for how you could treat the rim that hangs down on the platter. Um, so these are really cute little things and uh, just a novel exercise to play around with. So you will need a wooden knife tool, a couple of different ribs, you'll need a needle tool, you'll need a sponge, you'll need your bucket of water, a tile sponge. These can be purchased. A pack of three is like four or five bucks. Um, at Home Depot. You'll need a, either a ruler or a set of calipers. It's up to you. If you don't want to buy the calipers, you can use a ruler. These make your job a little bit easier. These calipers, they can be purchased at High Water or online. You'll need a chamois and that you'll also need a pound of clay for the um, cupcake stand part and you'll need a pound of clay for the stand itself or three quarters of a pound of clay would probably be pr plenty um, but it's better to have too much than too little so the top we're going to start with the top of the cupcake stand so i'm basically throwing just a very shallow little bowl this is being thrown upside down so to center, we push with this part of our hand and squeeze with our fingers in the back with both of our hands. And then when we're coning down, you're coning down just off the side and not directly on the top because if I do this right on the top, it flares out and you'll end up getting air trapped in down in here. You don't want that. So off to the side, just ever so slightly. You're pushing down and away from you with your top hand as you're pushing in with your side hand. So you are gonna center it a little bit wider than what you wanna end up with. And how do you know it's centered? Well, your hand is not dancing around on the clay as it spins on the wheel. You're looking for it to be centered on the top and on the side. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is open this little platter here out and I'm only opening it to the inside of my rim. When you open, you wanna go really slow with your index finger, and I'm pushing down right in the center. So I've got one finger holding the finger that's pushing down steady. So that means one finger is passive here, and one finger, this finger, is pushing down. That, for me, is my right hand. I want to make sure I don't go all the way down to the bottom because then my cupcake would fall right through the stand. So make sure that you're leaving enough room at the bottom there. We're going to take two fingers and widen this hole here. And that is so that I can get in there to pull out toward me. So now I'm gonna take these two fingers of my right hand and I'm gonna pull toward me. As I do that, the clay's gotta go somewhere so it usually pops up in your rim. So I compress that down with my thumb. So my fingers are actually right next to each other. My thumb wraps across the rim. I push down with my thumb as I'm pulling across with my fingers. So that looks like this. And at this point, you wanna slow your wheel down. 
You also want to move slow with your hands because if you are moving fast with your hands when you're pushing down or pulling across and you're going really fast, it throws the inside wall off center. So um, you'll know that's happening pretty quickly because it's going to get out of control on you. If it's out of control, that's a good sign that your wheel is moving too fast or your hands are moving too fast and you want to slow those things down. It's really deceptive watching someone throw because it looks like they're going a lot faster than they are. So just keep that in mind when you're throwing pots and learning. So what I'm doing here is compressing the inside with my finger to avoid cracking. You can also use your sponge for that by just holding it to the right hand side of the middle of this disc, or if you're throwing left-handed, it's gonna to be to the left-hand side. Okay, now we're gonna make this a little bit taller. And so when I'm making this taller, I actually use little amp pinchers, and they're on the inside and the outside. So the inside and the outside of my wall to pinch up nice and slow and gentle. So usually when my pinchers are on the interior and exterior of the wall, they look like this or this. Never this because then in the middle here, the clay will twist and torque on you and usually it will end up tearing off in your hands and that can be very frustrating. So make sure both fingers move up the wall slow your wheel down and you want to move up at a consistent pace you don't want to stay in any one part of the wall for a longer than a rotation or it's thinning out just that one spot so we're going to compress our rim compress the inside and then we'll do that until we get the height that we're looking for, for a pound of clay, probably about this high, depending on how thin you wanna make it. Remember that the thinner you make your pots, the more fragile they are after the fact. All right, so this is a pretty good height for this rim that I, um, what for what I'm gonna do or show you how to do here, which I am gonna show you how to alter some of these rims on these stands that you make. So this is a little bit taller than I need, and that is so that I can cut into it with my cut wire. So I'm gonna make a wiggly pattern with my cut wire. You take your wire and you put your fingers, your thumbs fairly close together. And then as the wheel is spinning slowly, you're gonna take a deep breath, exhale, and then you just kind of wiggle your wire as you go around. Make sure you stop when you're all the way around. and then you can just pick that away. If it doesn't want to come off, use your needle tool and you can use that to pick the, the clay up as well. I'm gonna throw this just a little bit thinner. So elongates that a little bit more, which I like a lot. So you're gonna take your chamois now, and because this is uneven, you have to go slow. And I'm just gonna let this ride along this rim. I'm gonna allow it to bounce with it as it goes around. So I'm not pushing down, 
just letting it ride. If you push down, then that rim will move a little bit on you and that's okay if you want it to flare out a little bit. You might end up liking how that looks. What I'm gonna do now is um, I'm actually gonna take my wooden knife tool and I'm gonna cut down just a little bit. So the angled side of the tool is what goes toward your project and you lead with the tip of the tool. I hold this tool like a pencil. And then we undercut that with our needle tool. And then we're gonna clean this up with a flat side of our soft rib. So remember that you wanna tilt this rib away from you just a little bit so that it doesn't chatter. Okay, so that's one kind of shape for a cupcake stand. I'm gonna throw a couple other shapes and um, I'll show you how you can think about surface treatments and alterations in that way. So on this rim, what I'm gonna do is split the rim and scallop the edge. So if I'm doing that, I need to clean this up first because doing those alterations, um, I won't be able to clean this up after the fact. So you wanna do any ribbing or wooden knife tool or any of that compression now. So when I split the rim, I want to clean off the slurry from the rim. I usually use a wooden knife tool. If there's another tool you're more comfortable with, you can do that. But I'm using the tip of this tool. I kind of lay it in between my thumb and index finger of my left hand, which is sitting on the rim. And then I slow my wheel down. You need a rim that's chunky to do this. Let it go around a rotation and clean the tool off. And then around a rotation and clean the tool off. If you don't do that, you end up with a bunch of boogers on the rim, which are very hard to get off. And I like this tool because this angle pushes this out and allows me to get in with my chamois and clean up those ridges. So I'm taking the nail of my left index finger here and putting it right in the middle of that ridge. And then I do the opposite for the interior. And you can see that that kind of cleans those two things up. Now when you're scalloping things, the, you're gonna use your non-dominant hand on the outside of your project. Your dominant hand or the hand that you write with is gonna be the one that makes your scallops. It's a lot like making a spout in terms of the motion. So I'm gonna use my right index to make the spout by rocking back and forth between my index and my thumb on the outside.
like so. <coughs> and then you're going to turn your project and you're gonna do that all the way around. So that is scalloped double rimmed edge. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna section this off. So you wanna figure out where your sections are gonna start. The easiest way to kind of think about dividing this up is in halves and then begin halving those halves. So what I mean by that is I would just pick the point at six o'clock and then you come across at 12, so that's half. And then you can half your halves And then you can half those again. And then again. So you can get as many sections as you like and get real crazy with it and play around. This is a lot of fun on bowls and mugs. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line from just above the bottom. I don't want it starting right at the rim, but just above it and we're gonna make a line going up. And then you wanna clean off your tool, spin it, and do that all the way around. So then next you're gonna take and put little sprigs or buttons where your intersections are. So you want to get some soft clay and you're going to make a little worm i'm drying off my wheel so that i can work right here because this is such a small object. I don't want a super fat worm. It would look kind of strange on this. So I'm getting this worm pretty, pretty thin. Then I'm just going to take my needle tool and chop that into sections. I'm eyeballing it, but if you want to get super precise with it, you can. And then you roll these little guys into a little circle by kind of rolling it around in the palm of your hand. And then you're gonna score where your intersection is. And because this is so wet, and I don't really need any slip. So I'm gonna score this little button and then take my thumb and just kind of push that on there. And you do that all the way around.
So this one I'm gonna leave plain and this one's gonna be cut later. I can show you how you would cut and manipulate one for fun. Another version of the tufted type of um, treatment is you can take your wooden knife tool. I'm taking this edge and kind of pushing into the center. So that looks like this. And I'm just gonna kind of start in the middle and then I'll go above and below. So I learned this technique from Jen Allen. Some of you were in her workshop, it was great. I'm just eyeballing these really. I just want them to kind of alternate a little. And then same thing, you can take your finger and kind of push from the interior out. Your fingers should be wet when you do this. So that's several different shapes that you've seen and um, what we're gonna do is move these to a wear board do not leave them on the bats there is not enough room in the back to do that um, so if you need help moving them to a wear board please get your instructor um, and they will get some gloves and help you to move those things all right so next we're going to demonstrate how to make the stems of these things. And this is where this tool will come in handy because you're gonna use this to measure the interior of this so that you don't make that part too large. So you're just basically measuring how wide that's gonna be. And remember that this and this are the same measurement as long as no one has changed the wing nut to the other hole. So you're looking for this to say basic one-to-one -one ratio and you know that that is equal parts. Set that on your bucket. That way it doesn't alter in size and we'll get throwing the stem part. Okay, so we're making the stem and this was the interior measurement of the first one that I'm looking at making a stem for. So I don't want it, I don't want the bottom to be a lot wider than this. So when you're centering, you need to start pretty close to where you're gonna end up. You can always trim it down a little bit, um, but you, if it's way too wide, you'll kind of be stuck there. So we're gonna open this all the way to the bat. You want to go really slow when you're opening with your hands. And then I'm gonna pull toward me. As I'm pulling toward me, I'm not gonna pull past this outside wall. And also I do push down gently on the rim with my thumb. You have to go slow with this because there is no floor on this. It will want to come off the wheel if you pull it out past this outside wall here. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. 
So what I mean is that you can't pull this inside part past this outside part because it will just pop right off the wheel. And then it may happen to you as you're learning to make things without bottoms. Don't give up, just wedge another piece of clay and keep on trucking. That's how we learn. Unless what? Unless you can't drive a truck. Honk, honk. <laughs> okay, now what I'm going to do is pull this up. So we're going straight up. They are going to look tall, but you've got to remember that if they're very short, they'll be very stout past the rim of what you've thrown. So it's okay that it looks tall. I'm also making sure that I don't hang out here a long, long time because if I thin this out, again, it doesn't have a floor, it'll come right off. When you're pulling upwards, you want to make sure that both hands move up the wall of clay and both hands are evenly spaced or not far apart. So my fingers either look like this or they look like this, but never this because then the clay twists through here. You'll hear me repeat that a lot because that is what I see a lot of people doing when they're first learning to throw is that the inside hand never moves. And depending on the form that you're trying to make, if the inside hand is still, you usually end up with a closed form and that's fine if that's what you're going for. But when you're trying to get height, you do need this hand to move a little bit. Um, usually if you're trying to get height, this inside hand is a little more passive, but it does move. If I have this very narrow, as it's holding up the stand that you put on top, it's going to be very tipsy. So it needs to support the rim of the stand. So I would make sure that you're flaring that out. So you can flare that out a couple of different ways. The way that I'm going to do it here is as I make my last pull, I'm going to pull toward me or I'm using more pressure on the interior hand than I am on the exterior. And that moves it out. Then we're just gonna use our rib to clean everything up. As I'm using my rib, I'm bracing the interior of the stem with my index finger of my left hand, which is just making sure to counteract the pressure I'm putting on the outside. I also, if you don't, if you haven't noticed, I also connect my hands together so they are talking to each other. And then in addition, I am gonna clean this part up here. So if you'll notice, it's pretty, let me do it on this side here so you can see. It's pretty tight in terms of the measurement. So I can use my wooden knife tool to just kind of get it a little bit smaller um, where I need it to be. So the angled side is the side towards what you're working on. You come above the area that you want to cut and slowly cut down. And then you undercut that with a needle tool. And 
and now you can see that's a better fit. And then any soft edge or any, excuse me, any sharp edges you're looking to correct, you want to do that now. So if your rim is a hot dog, your chamois is a hot dog bun. And you wrap it around either side and let it ride. And that is the stem. So you let this set up because if I run a wire under it right now, it will alter this. Um, when you pull this off of the bat, because you cannot store these on bats, um, we don't have enough space again. So put them on your wear board that we've given you. Um, you can undercut this with a cut wire or uh, the better option would be to take a fettling knife or even a kitchen butter knife and undercut that as you spin it on your wheel because if you use a knife, it tends to stay in the round. Um, it's up to you. All right, and then we'll meet you back here next week when we trim and assemble. Thanks for sticking with me. Have a great day.